Hey guys, Justin here, and welcome to the first example video following our course on differential equations here on the Math Major channel. Today's video is going to be on some simple differential equations and some basic concepts surrounding them, so let's go ahead and get into our first example. So question number one says, determine the order, unknown function, and independent variable in the following differential equation. We have y triple prime minus 5xy equals e to the x plus 1. We can see that we have a y triple prime here, so that makes this a third order ordinary differential equation. And now you might be asking, what is an ordinary differential equation, or ODE? That is a function that depends only on one independent variable. Now in this equation, our independent variable is x, but some books may use t or another uh, a letter to represent their independent variable as like the standard um, for an ODE. And then that, of course, makes y our unknown function. Now the counterpart to an ODE is a PDE, or a partial differential equation. And this is a differential equation that has two or more independent variables. So that's about all I wanted to talk about for this first example, so let's go ahead and get to the second one. So for the second problem, we're going to want to show that y equals 1 over x squared minus 1 is a solution of y prime plus 2x squared equals 0 on the open interval negative 1 to 1, but not on any larger interval containing negative 1 to 1. We're going to begin by noting the following. The derivative of this y that I've boxed in in purple here is equal to negative 2x over x squared minus 1 quantity squared. And we're going to observe that both y and its derivative y prime are well defined on negative 1 to 1. That is to say there's no singularities or issues in the denominator there. From, so from here we're going to substitute this y into our original equation, writing it as a clever way to express the number 0, which would be our original derivative negative 2x over x squared minus 1 quantity squared, and then we're going to express the positive counterpart of that as 2x times the quantity 1 over x squared minus 1, and that whole thing is squared. But writing it in this way makes it abundantly clear that 1 over x squared minus 1 is a solution for this equation. Then all we have to do is show that this is only a solution on this interval and not any and not on any larger interval containing negative 1, 1. But we can see if we expand our interval just to negative 1, 1, we are going to have issues with our denominator there, and our y is not going to be well defined. So this is the smallest interval containing negative 1, 1 that will have this as a solution. So let's go ahead on to the next problem. So number three says, find a solution of y prime equals x cubed, such that y of 1 is equal to 2. Now this is a good example of a basic initial value problem where we have a differential equation here and we're given an initial value which will be used to solve for the constants that will be produced by solving for y. So we have this general rule for initial value problems. In general, for an nth order differential equation, you need y and its first n minus 1 derivatives to have specified values for some point x naught. So let's go ahead and derive our general solution for this simple differential equation here. We have y prime is equal to x cubed. So we can simply take the antiderivative of both sides here, and we will get that y is equal to x to the fourth over 4 plus some constant c. So from here, we are going to, just as I said earlier, use our initial value to solve for this constant c. So substituting that in, we will have that 2 is equal to 1 to the 4th power over 4 plus c, and we can easily see that that will give us a value for our constant here that is 7 over 4. So that allows us to write our solution for this initial value as y is equal to x to the 4th over 4 plus 7 over 4, and that is our final answer. So now that we have the basic concept of initial value problem down, let's move into a higher order, more difficult example. So for number four, we want to find all of the equation y triple prime is equal to 2 plus sine of 2x, and then we have these three initial values. So right away we can see this is a third order initial value problem, and we do in fact have n minus 1, or in this case 2 derivatives at x naught, and our x naught in this case is 0. So let's go ahead and jump right into this problem, and we'll get that y double prime is equal to 2x minus cosine of 2x over 2 plus some constant c1 in this case, because we will have multiple constants as this is a third order differential equation. So we want to number them now. So we know from our initial condition that y double prime is equal to 3. 
Um, we can kind of split that up into two substitutions. We'll have that y double prime is equal to three and that x is equal to zero. So plugging those into our equation here, we will have that three is equal to zero because two times zero is zero minus one over two as the cosine of zero is equal to one and that two stays in the denominator. So we'll have that three is equal to negative one half plus C one. But that means of course that C one is going to be equal to seven over two. So plugging that value of C one into our equation, we will get our final definition for y double prime here. We'll have that y double prime is equal to 2x minus cosine of 2x over 2 plus 7 over 2. And that allows us to move on and take another antiderivative. So taking another antiderivative, we have y single prime is equal to x squared minus sine of 2x over 4 plus 7 over 2x plus c2. Once again, we are going to use our initial value here to solve for our second constant c2. So we can see we can split that up into two different substitutions. We will have that y prime is equal to negative six and that x is equal to zero. So plugging those values into our equation here for y prime, we have that negative six is equal to zero minus, in this case, our trigonometric term will give us a zero as the sine of zero is zero plus zero plus c2. So we will have that c2 is equal to negative six, which finishes our definition for y prime. We'll have that y prime is equal to x squared minus the sine of two x over four plus seven halves x minus six. So now we can take our third and final antiderivative. We will have that y is equal to x cubed over three plus the cosine of two x over eight. The sine flips here because we took the antiderivative of sine. Then we will have plus seven over four x squared minus six x plus c three. Now we can use our final initial value to solve for our third constant here, C3. We can see that we will have that one is equal to zero plus one over eight plus zero minus zero plus C3. Now it's very easy to see that our value for C3 will be seven over eight, which allows us to write our final definition for Y and finish this problem off. We will have that Y is equal to X cubed over three plus the cosine of two X over eight plus seven over four x squared minus six x plus seven over eight. And that finishes this problem off and that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching the video. If you'd like to watch another one, consider watching the video I've linked on the screen here, where Michael does a difficult triple integral for my GRE prep live stream. And if you're interested in my GRE prep live streams, I've included the playlist here on this side of the screen. And of course, if you'd like to support us, consider clicking the subscribe button, which I put here in the middle of the screen. As always, thanks for your support and have a great day.